not economic. It is uh, that it has stopped the flow of economic reform and social and structural reform to China. Although I think that has been going on, you know, since uh, 2002, 2003, when the new leadership came in, I think that that any kind of new financial reforms now are off the table, and institutional reforms are off the table. We've been talking about the People's Bank of China and Governor Zhou. Um, he is not Ben Bernanke. He has no authority to do anything about interest rates or exchange rates. He gets his order from the top, and that's the weakness of the Chinese system. And the reforms pulling back are, are also um, going to continue that process and make China more vulnerable to crises in the future. Now, the other place, where is the stimulus money going? It's going to the state-owned sector. Who owns uh, the major companies we all know about? Primarily, they're controlled by government shareholders whose goals are policy goals at odds with now the um, investors who have come in who are looking for a return on their investment. So this um, is giving the state-owned enterprises huge amounts of money. It's not going to small enterprises or small uh, or the, engine, the true engines of growth in China, which are the small and medium-sized enterprises. And these strong corporates, I think, are the new PLA of China. Um, the reason I say that is because they are organized, they are controlled by the government in a very central way, and so they represent an organizing force that is there because the institutions are so weak. And that's always been China's problem. Authority at the central government, at the center, has been always strong. But as you leave uh, Beijing, then uh, authority weakens. So that's my worry about this, that that process, which I believe represents the reaching of developmental limits by China, will be slowed down. 